Hello, it's a slightly rainy and slightly grey sort of day, so I thought I'd do a solar panel update. You may recall I put a brand new solar panel on the roof back in November, I think it was, either the end of October or start of November. A 520 watt panel, no, 540 watt, I think it is, massive great big thing it was, and that's in addition to the existing two 240 watt panels I already had at the back of the boat. The existing panels can tilt slightly left to right, the new panel I just put flat, um, as it was really intended as a bit of a winter supplement, because the existing panels already gave me plenty of power during the summertime, so tilting the new one wasn't ever really a consideration. I'll come back to that in a second. A few people said at the time, will you do an update? So yes, here it is. So I put the panel on at, as I say, the beginning of November, I think it was, and at the time the boat was in the marina on a pontoon that didn't have any shore power, so I was purely reliant on whatever I could generate from the solar, or if I needed to, run the engines. I did go to the extent of making a note, because in November, I don't know if you remember the weather then, but it was not great. It was very overcast, and December as well, pretty miserable. There wasn't much in the way of sunny days. It was all pretty bleak. And I went to the trouble of making a note of the days when I had to run the engine to bolster the solar, because even with the new panel, there wasn't going to be enough. And again, I'll come back to that in a second. And I'm really annoyed. I made this extensive note, and who knows what I've done with that note now. I've looked for it, and I've looked for it, and I've turned up pieces of paper here and there, and I cannot for the life of me find what I did with that note. And literally, day by day, I went, ran engine for one hour, ran engine for two hours. No idea what I did with that piece of paper. So it will have to suffice for me to say that during November and December, it was sufficiently grey and miserable that even with the additional solar, I've now got over a thousand watts of solar on the roof, I still had to run the engine occasionally. We had the odd sunny day, in which case that was fine, the solar was plenty, but mostly grey, overcast and horrible. And I note that my prediction was quite correct. Uh, people always say, obviously, you must tilt the panels, tilt the panels towards the sun. And I said, but if it's completely grey and overcast and you can't even see the sun, it's not going to make any difference. The light will be entirely diffuse and it won't matter which way you point. True to form, the bigger panel outperformed the two at the back, which were technically tilted in the direction of the sun, not that you could see it. And OK, it's, it's a slightly bigger panel, 540 versus 480, but I might get sometimes three or four amps off that new flat panel, and I was getting one or two off the two at the back. If the sun came out, yes, it was um, the other way round. If the sun came out and it was over in the direction that the panels were tilting, then the two at the back would do better than the flat one. But in combination, they were doing as well as you could expect for solar panels, which is to say if there's any decent light, it brings in some amps. If it's miserable, grey, raining, horrid, then you get perhaps one or two amps, literally as low as that, out of each panel. That's at um, 12 volts. I'm talking about the amps into the battery. Off the panel, remember, the, I think they're about 40 volts, the panels, so you get point something of an amp or one amp, and then by the time it's all converted down to 12 volts, it's roughly, I suppose, roughly four times in amp terms what you're getting off the panel, if that makes sense. So I'll be referring to everything in, in 12 volt terms in terms of what the solar controller was putting into the batteries. And as I say, on the miserable days, you're probably talking one to two amps off the panel at the front and one to two amps off the pair of panels at the back. That is not enough. I have not huge power requirements. See, the lights, they're all LED. That is so trivial as to be inconsequential. Charging your phone, effectively inconsequential. Uh, the water pumps, remember there's a pump to take water out of the shower and a pump to actually pump the water into the basins and shower, but they only run for a limited time each day, so relatively speaking that's inconsequential. The biggest draw on a boat by far and away is going to be the fridge, in my case a fridge freezer. That draws, actually I don't know what it draws, but I think they're typically rated at about 45 amp hours used per day out of a 12 volt battery bank. So 45 plus the other little bits for lighting, maybe the telly, although I stopped watching the telly when it was um, so miserable because I just didn't want to draw the power. Um, but the laptop, I last year switched 
from a PC laptop which used to draw 170 watts when it was full. I mean, it's quite a powerful PC, but when it was full out, flat out rendering, the fans going like mad, it would draw 170 watts. The M1 MacBook Air, and I'm not a Mac fan, I don't want to get into that debate, but I'm not a great fan of the Macs, but by golly, it's a, it's a transformation and a revelation. It only draws 30 watts, does it entirely silently, and runs the video editing software better than the old PC laptop did. So that's what a leap in technology can do for you. So 30 watts, very limited draw effectively from the laptop, but even so, on those dark, damp days, I did not want to switch the laptop on because 30 watts is about 3 amps at 12 volts, and again, that would have been my entire solar production, leaving me nothing for lights, fridge, everything else. Thus, there were days during November and December that I had to run the engine, because running the engine runs the alternator, alternator charges the leisure battery bank. Now, in theory, you should run the engine for several hours, filling up a battery bank of conventional batteries, and that's what mine are, they're lead carbon, they're not um, lithium, Filling those is a bit like filling a lock. When you start putting charge in from empty, whoosh, the charge comes in at a great rate. But the more full the batteries get, the slower they accept charge. So to get them from 80 to 100% could take you three, four hours of running the engine, which I wasn't prepared to do because it's noisy and the whole boat vibrates and uh, it's not nice for anyone else in the marina to listen to my engine running all the time. So what I would typically do is do an hour or maybe two hours of um, running the engine just to put a whack of charge into the batteries to keep me going. It's not good for the batteries, they would prefer to be fully charged, but needs must, that's just what I needed to do to keep myself ticking over. I would say, typically, I was having to do that by the beginning of December. I was pretty much having to do that every day because the weather was so bad and the solar panels just couldn't bring in enough. And in fact, by the 18th of December, it got to the point where I thought, oh, this is this is not going to work at all. And for one month, one month precisely, I went back onto a pontoon in the marina, which had a shore power connection, and I plugged in. And oh my word, the huge, overwhelming relief you get from plugging into a shoreline. I didn't realise how stressed about it I was until I plugged in. I could run the vacuum cleaner. I could run the laptop as long as, I, as long as I wanted. I could run the microwave. I just... Oh, the batteries, they sat there fully charged the whole time. It was bliss, I tell you, bliss. So I, I did that for one month, and on January the 19th, I came off the pontoon, because it was just beginning to get a bit lighter again. I think December 21st was shortest day, wasn't it? You don't... I think the amount of hours of daylight then was about six. But by January the 19th, we had some nice weather at the beginning of January, at the end of January. I came off the pontoon, back onto my unpowered pontoon, and from that point onward, did not need to run the engine again. And I was running the laptop, didn't run the... No, I even used the microwave a couple of times, I think. We, we had a spate of really sunny days, and the solar panels were pulling in... Um, I don't remember how many amps, but it was plenty, plenty sufficient for the batteries... At the end of the day, when the sun went down, the batteries were still showing 12.7 volts. And yeah, I know that voltage is a little bit of a dodgy thing to read them on, because you need the batteries to be fully rested for a couple of hours with no draw. But generally speaking, if the fridge is off and the lights are drawing negligible, I would take that voltage reading as being relatively good. I've done it enough that I know the state of my own batteries. Um, and if they were reading 12.7 at the end of the day, that can be taken as a good state. So the solar was a worthwhile thing to have. I think it kept me going into winter longer than if I hadn't had the panels. It did pretty much double my solar input. But as I say, when you're in the grey days of winter, if you're only getting one or two amps off the first set of panels, well, it will only double up to about three or four amps by adding um, twice the amount of solar. And it's not enough. It's not enough to run your appliances if you want to run a fridge. Now, some people say, well, don't run a fridge in winter. Just stick all your fridge stuff out in the well deck. The trouble is, my well deck actually acts like a little bit of a greenhouse. It gets quite warm in there, even on a fairly miserable day. And if I put stuff out the back, again, you can't really guarantee the temperatures. We, we had a fairly mild winter. It was probably around eight degrees. Well, that's not fridge temperature. A fridge is 
below five degrees Celsius. Um, so I wouldn't be happy putting my milk and my, my stuff just outside to leave it be cool because it wasn't cool enough. Also, I've got a freezer and the freezer section needed to be running um, because I make use of that freezer section. So the, the whole fridge thing was going to be on anyway. Uh, but obviously some people do in winter just turn their fridge off. Immediately they've saved a massive amount of, of power. Uh, and if that's the way you want to do it, maybe dangle things in the canal water to keep them cool. I wouldn't fancy that myself, but you can do it if you want to. So what am I saying? What is my conclusion? My conclusion is I'm pleased to have put the extra solar on. It will be redundant in summer because I already have on sunny days from, I don't know, April onwards through until September, the existing panels gave me plenty of power. Unless you had a run of really nasty cloudy days, in which case again the new panel will help. But I would say it was of assistance um, in terms of getting further into November, December before the point came where I had to run the engine. I probably had to run the engine for slightly less and then eventually, as I say, I gave up and put a shoreline connection on. The other thing I want to mention about the solar panels is that when I put them in, I mentioned I put in a little parallel adapter which made the two solar controllers theoretically talk to each other and coordinate so that they would talk to each other about how they were putting the power into the batteries and it should work better. What I actually found is it, it worked worse. The instructions are very vague on what that parallel controller is doing except it does say in just two lines it will turn off one of the controllers when the incoming um, amperage is less than, th or not the incoming, but the, the amperage to the battery is less than three amps or something. And I think it basically, it was thinking, because there was so little power coming in, because the weather was so rubbish, the solar controller or the parallel controller was thinking the batteries must be nearly charged because there was not much going into them. And normally, as I say, batteries take less charge when they're nearly full. So I think the parallel control was seeing little charge coming in, saying, oh, they must be nearly full. And it turned off one of the charge controls. Well, I, I didn't want it doing that. I needed as much coming in as I could get. So over winter, I unplugged the parallel controller and just let the two separate charge controllers do their own thing. They seemed entirely happy with this arrangement. And I know other people who've got multiple charge controllers doing their own thing. Um, so it didn't seem to be a problem at all. Now that we've got slightly sunnier days, I have plugged the charge controller, not the charge controller, the parallel controller back in to, to tally the two up. And we'll see if that makes any difference. The slight difference it makes is that I can plug the, the one battery temperature sensor I've got into the parallel controller and it will feed that to both the charge controllers, whereas before, having only one temperature sensor, I plugged it into just one of them. So one was accurate and one was not, and that makes a tiny difference to the charge profile. I don't think it'll make any um, tangible difference. So my conclusion on the parallel controller for these EP Ever Tracer units is that I reserve judgment on it. It didn't seem to be helpful when there was very little charge coming in over winter. It may be more helpful when there is more sunshine around generally. Finally, for this video, I suppose I ought to do an update, and it's not really an update, I'm afraid, on the lead carbon batteries. I bought them in May 2019 at the Crick Show, and I installed them, I think it was only a couple of months later. So where are I now? 2020, 21, 22. All right, they're two and a half years old. And people keep saying to me, well, how are the lead carbon batteries? And the answer is, I don't really know, because I don't have any means to actually test them in any meaningful form. They are in they are working as one would expect batteries to do. They seem to hold a charge as much as they should. They're not suddenly failing to hold a charge. I'm not charging them in the morning and then they're dead by evening. So they're still working, but can I give you a solid factual data analyzed basis on which to say they're good or bad? No, unfortunately I cannot. The solar controllers stuff charge into them. The alternator stuffs charge into them. They run everything on the boat. And then the next day they get another stuffing of solar. So they work, but that is, I'm afraid, all I can tell you on the lead carbons. Two and a half years old, they're still working as I would expect batteries to do. And that is really, the only way I could do it would be literally to take one out, put a fixed wattage load across the terminals, measure how long it took to discharge, all that kind of stuff. I, I don't really have the means to do that kind of testing, I'm afraid. So my only update on the batteries is they're still working. So. 
that is that. So there we go, a bit of a ranty, chatty old update video this one, uh, but I hope it was of some vague interest. Anyway, that's it for this. Cheerio, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.